everybody. Welcome to episode 57 of the Stop and Give Me 20 podcast. 20 minutes with some of the world's top fitness professionals. I'm your host, Anthony Randy. You can check out the show notes at continuefit.com. Before you do that, go to iTunes and subscribe to the show. Please leave us a review and a rating. All right, for today's episode, I have on Maria Mountain, and she's the owner of Revolution Sport Conditioning in London, Ontario. She designs quality training programs for top-notch athletes, Stanley Cup champions, Olympic gold and bronze, all colors of the medals. She also works with plenty of amateurs who are in pursuit of their untapped potential. Online, she helps hockey goalies from around the world, from the NHL to the Double A teams win more games with fewer injuries at goalietrainingpro.com. She's coached and consulted with NHL teams, USA Hockey, the NSCA Hockey Training Clinic, Network Goaltending, and more. This summer, she's going to be at the Hockey Summit, joining the Hockey Summit team to help some of their top hockey players in the world prepare for their best season ever when she's not chugging beer from the stanley cup and we might have to hear that story uh she can be found running skiing or riding her honda sport bike in and around london maria thanks for coming on thanks anthony great to be here all right let's get right into it what's your story um you know what i i had an older brother so a brother is three years older than me and and just kind of grew up in a neighborhood with boys living, you know, next door and up the street. So I was a tomboy right from the get go. I wasn't very interested in, uh, you know, sitting around playing with dolls. I wanted to be out playing sports. But, um, you know, I think I, I kind of realized probably subconsciously at a young age that, hey, if I'm going to if they're going to let me play, um, then I need to be pretty good. So I would. Um, you know, I would pra- like Roger Staubach was my guy. And so I would, I would practice throwing the football down, down our, like a Nerf football down the hallway in the house I grew up in, you know, we had a narrow hall and all our bedrooms were off it. And, you know, I would practice for hours throwing the football and dribbling the basketball, you know, puck handling so that I would be pretty good. And so, th- you know, it was cool. Cause they let me, you know, I could, I was the quarterback, I was the goalie. Um, and that's, that's sort of how I always had a love of sport and, and my, my dad, you know, loved to ski and hike and, you know, had us out being active. And, um, I think I learned too that, Hey, if you want to get opportunities, then you better do some extra practice so that, so that you can play with the boys. <laughs> Very cool. Now, did you start becoming a goalie because you loved it or because basically they were like, Hey Marie, get in goal. We're shooting pucks at you. Yeah, no, like, um, and I, as I recall, maybe again, it's goalies are wired a little differently, but as I recall, like people wanted to be the goalie and, and if you got to be the goalie, it was like, Oh wow. You know, that's, that's pretty good. Now maybe, yeah, maybe they, it was just a trick they played on me to, <laughs> to get me to stand in there. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, they were they were all standing around like I want to be goalie, I want to be goalie, and they they made you think that it was cool to be the goalie. See, <laughs> that's exactly it. I was like, I I want to be the goalie. Oh, okay, you can be the goalie. <laughs> now, did you start? Uh, what about like physical training besides practicing? Were you you know when did that start? Just like start to train for sports. Yeah, it's cool. Um, I mean, I think when. Uh, my next door neighbor, Doug Cameron, he had, he had older, older brothers and sisters. So they had one of those, um, weed or like those barbell sets, you know, uh, with, and they even had the iron plates. So they were so old. It was before they had the cement plates. Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, like we would, and Doug was a pretty big guy and, but we'd be under there, like how, see how much we could lift over our heads and like dropping these weights in the basement. And, and then I remember, um, my dad, my parents went to Toronto and my dad brought, they'd bring back a little gift if they went away for like a vacation or whatever and my gift was these um i still have them actually these um 10 pound dumbbells and uh, i was like oh my god like this is you know the best dad ever brings this probably i was like nine or ten year old daughter these dumbbells and um so i started working with those and then yeah for at the end of the school year we would um get like a little treat and so my treat was the cement filled (laughs) you know barbell set and um, so that's, that's where I started, you know, the, the, yeah, the love of physical training, uh, like that. Very cool. Very cool. Let's talk about growing up. Who was that superhero for you? Who was that person that kind of influenced you the most that you were kind of really looking up to? 
Um, I mean, I think at the time it was, it probably was Roger Staubach because he was, he always was so in control and in tune and, you know, just always seemed like a nice guy too, um, that I think I really, I really respected him. And, and like literally my dad, we were in the family station wagon going somewhere and I was, yeah, I was probably 11 or maybe even 12. And, and my dad had to tell me like, Maria, you're not going to be the quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. Like it just, <laughs> Like that just isn't going to happen. And maybe, oh, you should pursue something like ski racing or something else. Um, but I mean, bless him because he's, you know, he didn't say, well, cause you're a girl, it's just not going to happen. He's like, you know what? You're going to be too short and you won't be able to see over the offensive line. <laughs> it was like, yeah, you know, good point. Dad. <laughs> no. So, you know, as a kid, I think probably um, if I think of who really probably had the most influence on me, it was probably my grandmother on my mom's side. She was Greek. Uh, immigrated to Canada in 1929 in the Depression um, with the idea that she would literally pick up money and gold off the streets. Oh, so gosh. there was some uh, fake news back in 1929, apparently, too. <laughs> but, you know, so didn't know the language, came by herself, uh, you know, couldn't eat a lot of the food because it was so different. And she opened a restaurant and had a business. And, um, you know, it's just the things she lived through and the strength she had that's probably had the biggest influence in me on me growing up very cool she's my superhero now too geez yeah, um she is stubborn too and it's like yeah it's it's like uh you look at it like you know, like a sense of pride like yeah i'm just as stubborn as my yaya <laughs> <laughs> um let's talk about now who's that kind of superhero now who's like anybody out there you're looking up to doing great things changing the world yeah i think from like um like a macro perspective it's that would be probably richard branson um, just the, you know, the courage he has to start other businesses and do other things and, and fall on his face and be okay with that and, and just pick himself up and keep going. So he's a guy, I think on a micro level, it would, it would probably be Bedros Koulian, um, who's been a coach of mine, a business coach, uh, who just, when you look, I've known him for quite a while and you look at his growth and his development and how generous he is with his knowledge and he's really changed my life and I know he's changed lots of other people's lives out there. So, um, yeah, those would be the two. Very cool. What about you? Who are you trying to be a superhero to? You have the gym, you have the online programming. Uh, who are the people you're trying to affect with your message? Uh, well, I think just, yeah, just trying to be a positive role model for the athletes that we train at Revolution, uh, the goalies that I train online, you know, trying to show them, give them the tools to be an amazing athlete, but at the same time, show them how to be a quality human being. I think that's the thing that I'm most proud of is when I just see the wonderful people these kids grow to become, regardless of whether they you know, achieve their goals as an athlete or not. Um, you know, we don't all have the ability to, to play a professional sport or go to the Olympics, but if they, you know, go as far as they can and, and find what their potential is. And at the end of the day, they're great people because they spend some time with us. That's then, yeah, then that would be my superhero power. Yeah. Very cool. Now I want to kind of it's interesting because, you know, it just reminded me of your dad saying, yeah, you know, not everybody's going to go. You're not, you know, you're not tall enough, but, um, <laughs> but you know, you had mentioned you were, you know, he didn't say because you're a girl. And what I always hated, like when people would say, oh, girls can't, girls can't do pull-ups. I'm like, no, they can. I, I'm 51. So me growing up, like you didn't see any girls working out. It was still back then kind of, you know, girls tried not to play sports. There was only a select few. They usually played like three, all three sports. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, it's only because we, like, they weren't training. Of course they couldn't do a pull-up because, you know, they didn't, they weren't trying to do pull-ups or nobody was training them to do pull-ups. Um, yeah. But I, I love how the, to me, it's so important, like your dad, that influence that he had, like, not just going out and setting the example, but, um, uh, but, you know, bringing home those, those, you know, those dumbbells when you were nine mm -hmm. or 10. Um, talk to us about that piece of it. Have you tried at all? Like when you have young females in there, is it just so different where you don't even have to have that conversation or how do you try to help them remember that, you know, they're, they're equal? Yeah. Um, that's a really good question. And I, I think, 
Um, you know, I don't know if we have to remind them that they're equal, but I think there are still a lot of young female athletes and even very gifted athletes who are afraid to be strong, mm. um, because it seems not feminine. So, you know, they'll, they'll, you know, for doing a one arm row and they're using a 15 pound dumbbell and it's like, you know, that, that it's like, is that challenging for you? Ah, you know, <laughs> no, <laughs> it's like, you know, we need to make you stronger. And I, I think they still think that it's, they're going to be bulky and if they get strong, so trying to educate them a little bit on, you know, how they can be strong and still, you know, be lean. And, um, so that, that's more, I think of what I see, there's just so many more, yeah, opportunities for them yeah. now. I, you know, when I was a kid, girls didn't play hockey. Um, when I was in grade nine, um, like my, I was excited because there was a weight room at the high school and I was like, awesome. I'm going to go in there at lunchtime. My brother was like, you know, don't you dare go in there. Like you'll, you'll be ostracized. And, um, you know, I did, I wasn't really ostracized, but the guys would all, you know, want to come over and try to show me how to do it or, yeah. you know, but, but, uh, yeah, it was different. Well, I think it's interesting too. Uh, you know, you, you never want to try to bring looks into something, but you've, Probably, I mean, you're you're lean now, so they're not going to look at you as somebody who like I don't want to look bulky like Maria because you're not bulky. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And yeah, so I guess maybe that's too just part of being a positive role model. Like they can see, you know, that I'm strong and that I'm not. Um, yeah, I'm not bulky, and and so hopefully they, you know, they don't feel so scared to get strong because that's that's the biggest thing I see missing. It's just that yeah, like you said, they're not. They can't, they're not doing pull-ups because they just haven't been trained to be strong. Yeah. And I remember, you're right, though. I remember uh, a young lady playing when I was 12. Um, her, I know, her brother was Lee Abramson, I think his name was. But he his sister played. She was a little younger than us. And um, that was the only girl I ever played against. Okay. And this is – I grew up playing in the 70s and 80s. And, and mm -hmm. so, I mean – I went to the rink last year over the winter and there was like these, I don't know, six to eight year old, nine year old girls playing. And I think it was mostly girls. I just couldn't believe it. It was so amazing to see these girls come off the ice. For me, I know because I'm not around, I don't have kids, so I don't see it as much anymore. I'm not at the rink as much. And it was so cool to see them coming off the ice because, you know, just to see them out there playing and, and you know, being part of it. I just loved it. Yeah, I love it too. I love it too. At the younger ages, you see teams, it's, you know, it's boys and girls and like, that's, that's fantastic too. Uh, yeah. It's really, it's come a long, long way. Yeah. And you know, it's interesting too is, and I've told this story before, maybe not on here, but, um, you were just talking about, you know, you grew up Roger Stallback. He was your guy. Um, and part of the reason was because you really didn't have any female sports role models. You know, I remember going to in the 90s, I went to a uh, late 90s, I think I went to a uh, New York Liberty game. And, um, mm. uh, you know, I sat down and I just started. It hit me. I saw all these girls, you know, with Lobo. Rebecca Lobo was the star. Mm. You know, Lobo shirts on and like, what did they wear in the 80s? They were like Michael Jordan shirts and, and you know, Wayne Gretzky jerseys. And um, so it's kind of interesting that, you know, when you grew up, there were no female role models like that. Yeah, not in sports like the like the sports I wanted to play. Mm -hmm. I, I'm thinking there would be. Um, you know, I remember uh, 1976 seeing Nadia Comaneci compete at the Olympics. But, you know, it's like, yeah, I'm clearly not going to be a gymnast or a figure skater or uh, anything like that. So, yeah, in a, in a team sport setting, there weren't, um, you know, I, th I think in Canada, some of the downhill ski racers, you know, the females, yep. um, you know, were sort of out there. So maybe I gravitated towards them a little bit. But, yeah, not not a lot. Yeah, it's crazy. Now it's time for the Marigold Bar Stop and Give Me Five segment. Five rapid fire questions and answers brought to you by Marigold Bars, grass fed protein, gluten free, organic ingredients, non GMO, no preservatives. You have to keep them in the fridge because there's nothing in them to keep them preserved. <laughs> they taste amazing too. All right, check them out at marigoldbars.com. All right, Marie, you ready for this? Yep. All right. Favorite goalie of all time? That's who I was every day in the driveway after school. Ken Dryden for the Montreal Canadiens. Um, just 
<laughs> like when, when you go back and look at how they played and the pads and and then you add on top of that like the dude went to law school yeah. while he was playing in the NHL like you know it's just unbelievable but I remember having his ho- getting his hockey card you know you just you'd sort through those packs and just the day you got your Dryden uh, hockey card it was like oh you know thank god yeah. uh, my collection's complete so Dryden he's the man um, wait quick sidebar uh, why not uh, the why, what happened with like Mike Palmatier, Toronto goalie at the right. time? I mean, come on. <laughs> well, it's funny because um, my dad did some of his training in Montreal, so my my dad was a Habs fan, and so um, you know that was that was it. I, you know, I'd watch hockey with my dad, and it was Montreal. Um, I didn't really become a Toronto fan until I was in university, and one year I lived with three guys who all cheered for uh, the Leafs, so they kind of they kind of turned me to the dark side. But but I still have a soft spot for Montreal. There you go. All right, if you could have a few beers with any non-goalie, any person from the past, who would it be, uh, and what would you ask them? Um, I think it would be John Wooden. Um, who I just think of regard as one of the greatest coaches and and I've learned so much wisdom just from reading his books Um, I think I would ask him a lot but the one that pops it to head right now is just what were the factors that went into his decision to retire I I think he retired after winning maybe his 10th championship but I'd be interested to know you know just what what told him that it was time to move on very cool um I know you're a big music fan. You could play a song with your favorite band. What's that? What is your favorite band, and what's the song you'd want to play with them? This is easy. It would be you two, uh, and it would be the song called "Party Girl." Oh, nice. I knew it. I knew the band. Anybody that follows you on social media <laughs> knows the band. I just wanted to get yeah. the song in there. Yeah, the song's a little a little different actually, and they played it at uh, when we saw them at Madison Square Gardens, and it was yeah, just like yeah, a highlight. Very cool. Um, if you could be in any movie, what would it be? I wanted to say Chariots of Fire because that sounds good, but actually, when, really, it would be Notting Hill. I love that movie. All right. That's <laughs> it. There you go. Um, craziest goalie habit that you've seen that you think was like, wow, that's a little, maybe a little weird. Well, it's funny because, uh, like, and I, I, I think I'm a little bit goalie wired too because it's like, well, that's not crazy. Like, it's not crazy <laughs> that they talk that they talk to their goalposts because their goalposts can help them by making saves. So why wouldn't you? You know, and it's not crazy that they like spray water in the air and stare at the droplets. They're just refocusing. <laughs> so I, I, I really don't understand the question. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So I uh, hope these uh, little uh, sp- uh, bang in the. Bang in the post and then then uh, doing a twirl as he goes out in between periods. That's not yeah, weird. exactly. No, that makes perfect sense. Yeah, it's like, hey, hey, post, you got my back. I got you. Here we go. Let's do this. There you go, everybody. That just told you everything you need to know about Maria. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Maria, all right. Let's. Uh, what's a project you're working on right now that's getting you really excited? Um, I've got a couple on the go, but I think the one that will have a big impact is um, I started using the Train Heroic platform, actually, that uh, that you mentioned on strengthcoach.com and that, that's how our Strength Coach podcast. And so I've started using that at Revolution and I'm going to integrate it with the goalies I train online as well. Um, but just I think it's going to make it easier to use the data that we collect to make changes to our actual training programs and to chart progress. So I'm pretty excited about that. Very cool. All right. Uh, let's go with the uh, letter to your younger self. What advice are you going to give young Maria? Um, I would tell young Maria, um, learn to worry less sooner. Uh, I was a big worrier and I had to teach myself to, to be less. So, um, just trust your instincts and your ability and, uh, I think the drive, the drive you have to continually improve and learn is probably one of your greatest assets. So keep, keep doing that. Very cool. Love it. Good advice. I know, I know firsthand, uh, I've seen that drive and that, uh, that, that eagerness to learn and to continue to learn. So very cool. Maria, thanks so much for, uh, for coming on. It's uh, always fun to chat with you. So really appreciate you coming on. My pleasure, 100%, Anthony. All right. Well, that's going to do it for episode 57 of The Stop and Give Me 20 podcast. Thanks again to Maria Mountain. Make sure you check out all the links to all her stuff 
at ContinueFit.com. Thanks to Marigold Bars, high quality protein with all the premium ingredients. Check them out at MarigoldBars.com. My name's Anthony Rana. Thanks so much for stopping by.